All right, so here we go again. Uh, today we're solving systems of equations. The immediate question is, uh, what the hell is a system? And the answer is quite simple. One way to think about a system, a system of equations, is to think about it as um, a forest, where equations are the trees, and a system is the forest, meaning that a system is just a bunch of equations. That's all. Here, I'll make it more concrete. Consider a typical example from previous sections. Uh, this would be an example of an equation. And it would go something like this. 5 plus a number times 4 is 13. And so the equation may look something like this. 5 plus a number times 4 is equal to 13. That right there, that's an equation. Now compare that with the following. <clears throat> Suppose you have two numbers. Not one, but two numbers. And their sum is 12. And their difference is 14. This one tells you one equation, and the difference is for that tells you another equation. So now you're going to have two equations. It would look something like this. The sum of the two numbers that are unknown is 12, and the difference is 4. And that right there, that's a system of equations. This is the forest, a bunch of equations. Each equation is like a tree. That's a, a reasonable first look at systems of equations. They're just a bunch of equations. And by a bunch, we mean one or more. And typically, they have uh, several variables, although it doesn't have to be the case, technically speaking. Anyways, that's when a system of equations is, and of course, to solve it means we got to figure out what these unknown numbers are. Uh, the technique we're going to learn today is called uh, solving the system of equations by adding, adding the equations. And it goes something like this. Um, it goes something like this go something like this all right so so the idea is, is something like this I, I'll put it off on the side the idea you know, just a little mini idea to get us going suppose I know that 4 is the same thing as 3 plus 1 suppose I also know that 2 plus uh, 7 is equal to 9 suppose I know those two facts the idea of adding the two equations means I add all these guys I add the 4 that I have on that side and I add the 2 that I have on that side, and I add the 7 on that side, and I should get the same thing as on the right hand side, a 9 plus a 3 plus the 1. Of course, this side gives you 13, while that side over there gives you uh, 6 plus 7, which is also 13. It's not a surprise entirely, because if you had the same amount on this side as you did on that side, and the same amount on that side as you did on that side, well, adding these amounts would be the same as adding those amounts. That's just a little rough idea of why it might be true, but of course we're saving the best for last. At last we're going to have a rigorous proof uh, that will make you smile uh, of why we can go ahead and add two equations together. That's just a little starter. In any case, look what happens when you add two equations together. Sometimes amazing things happen when you add two equations. The x plus an x would give me 2x. The y plus a negative y would give me 0. The 4 plus a 12 would give me 16. I would get a total. This is by adding the two equations. I know, we're going to come back and prove that. I, I would get one equation with only one variable. That's comfort zone right there, because we've done many of these. Um, one equation, one variable. We're kind of good at them, especially the linear and the quadratic ones, and the rational ones, and some with square roots, and some with absolute values. Um, anyways, it seems like this is doable. We could slap a one-half on both sides, and that you get that x is equal to 8. Um, and there's one of the solutions. It's not quite finished because we should figure out what y is. So now we substitute it back into this one. Uh, here we know that uh, we know that x plus y is equal to 12. That was given. And then we know that x is equal to 8. Therefore, uh, 8 plus y is equal to 12. This is called the substitution step. And so then I could subtract 8 from both sides giving me the answer that y is equal to 4 cancellation law of addition and by inspection and look what I've got now, I've got uh, that y should be 4 and x should be equal to 8 let's test it, we were looking for two numbers that when you add them you get 12 well if I add 8 and 12 sorry, if I add 8 and 4 in fact I get 12 we were also looking for such numbers that when you took the difference you get 4 well if you take the difference 8 minus 4. Indeed, you get 4. Ipikaye. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. That's nice, right?
the key here was adding the two equations. And the other key was that we were so lucky that these guys matched. When you add the positive y and the negative y, psh, the y's were gone, leaving us with one equation with one variable. That's the sweet spot right there. One equation, one variable. That's where you want to get to. All right. So there's a lot more things to do here. We got to practice this some more. We got to come back and prove why is it that you can add the two equations together, and a few other little minor things. But uh, this is a really guy, nice example to to get us going. Let's take a look at this example. This one says three times a number plus two times another number is equal to one, while negative three times the first number minus five times the second number is equal to negative seven. And the goal, of course, is to figure out what the numbers are. This is duck soup. I'm going to do it in green for duck soup. So I'm going to add the two equations together. If I add these, luckily, look at this. These match perfectly. 3x and minus 3x. Boom, gone. Zero x's. Uh, two y's and negative uh, five y's. I reckon that would give me negative three y's, and this would be negative six. What I did there is add the two equations, which gives me something nice to look forward to. At the end of today's lecture, we should prove why is it that you can add the two equations. Um, all right. Now what? So this gives me that negative three y is equal to negative six. This is just by inspection. Zero times x is zero. Zero is added of identity. It's gone. Now we've got to get rid of this negative 3. Maybe we can do a little killing of the coefficient. Yeah. That would give us that y is equal to 2 by inspection. And now what? Well, we take what, any one of the two equations would work here and we write it, write it again like this 3x plus 2y is equal to 1. That part was given. And what you do want to do with this given equation is you want to take the value that you solve for and substitute it in there so that you have another equation with only one unknown, the x, which is the one other one you got to solve for. Talk is cheap, let's do it. 3x plus 2 times 2 is equal to 1. This is called a substitution step. I substituted 2 into y. That gives me that 3x plus 4 is equal to 1. That's by times table. And I could add a negative four to both sides, giving me something like this. Of course I want to kill the coefficient again here, divide both sides by three. That would give me that x equals negative one, which is the same thing as negative three divided by three. There we go, yippee we got our solution here. Our solution is x should be negative one and y should be two. And it's easy to check. Check three times negative one, that's three times x, plus 2 times y, is that equal to 1? Well, I'm getting negative 3 plus 4, yeah, that is equal to 1. And check that it works on the other one. Negative 3 times negative 1 plus negative 5 times 2, is that equal to negative 7? Uh, well, here I'm getting 3, positive 3, and here I'm getting negative 10. Negative 10, positive 3, in fact, negative 7. Yippee told you. See why they pay me? It's beautiful. Keep in mind a couple of things here though. We're just babies, we're little baby solvers when it comes to systems or equations. So there's a couple of things that were especially easy here so that we could practice on easy ones. The thing that was easy here is that these ones matched exactly so that we, when we added them they limited. That's the key, key idea right there. If they weren't the same this wouldn't have been 0x and we would have another equation with more x's and more y's. The other key thing is that we got to come back and understand why is it okay to add two equations together. Okay, <clears throat> all right. Let's talk this cheap. Let's uh, let's try this example. So, if you go on and you try are adding the two equations together, you would get five x's there, and you would get a total of three y's there, because you have two y's plus one y, and that's equal to four. And that's add the two equations, and that's legal. But there's always two questions: is it legal and is it helpful? And it seems to me that uh, while this is legal, it's not that helpful because you still have x's and y's. See, the thing that made the other ones easy was the fact that there was no more x's left here. Same thing with the other one, there was no more y's. One of them got killed. In this case, uh, nothing's getting killed. So, we're not going to let that stop us. What we do is we start over and we say, you know what, I could take this equation and I could multiply everything 
by negative 2. So if I multiply this side by negative 2, and I can multiply this side by negative 2, I could do that by cancellation law of multiplication. That would give me that negative 4x plus negative 2y is equal to negative 6. This is by distributive law, that is distributing the negative 2. And I rewrite this one over here because that was given, 3x plus 2y is equal to 1. That was given, and now look at us. Notice that the 2y and the negative 2y match exactly the same except one's positive, one's negative. That's exactly, exactly what we want because when they are the same and you add them together, magical things happen. Here I'm going to get uh, negative x and here I'm going to get zero y's and here I'm going to get negative 5 and that's by adding the two equations. The key thing here to observe is that no more y's are left so you're just left with negative x equals negative 5 so that x equals 5 and there's half your answer here we've got our x we always got to find the other value as well so we rewrite one of these any one of them I'll write this one 2x plus y is equal to 3 that was given and then I can take this and substitute it wherever I see x so I'll have 2 times 5 plus y is equal to 3 this is called the substitution step and I get that 10 plus y is equal to 3 by times table and I'll add a negative 10 to both sides uh, cancellation law of addition and by inspection to produce the final answer. The answer is x equals 5 y equals negative 7. Beautiful. Okay, That's a system of equations now you may wonder how in the world would this pop up in an algebra class and this is one way that it pops up in an algebra class where you're uh, challenged with the following proposition suppose you have some nickels and dimes some coins and the total number of coins is 12 while the total amount of money is 95 cents how many of each do we have that turns out to be a perfect example of a system of equations uh, the first part of the system means that the total number of coins is 12. So the number of dimes plus the number of nickels is equal to 12 because they say that we have nickels and dimes. And the total number of money is 95. Here I'll do that in a different color just for illustrations. Total number of money is 95. So something is equal to 95. The number of dimes times 10 plus the number of nickels times 5 because each nickel is worth 5 cents and each dime is worth 10 cents so this is how much money I have in dimes plus this is how much money I have in nickels that's equal to 95 and lo and behold we have a system of equations two equations two unknowns we may be able to do something here of course if you just add them together this way nothing will cancel so I could take this one here and multiply by negative 5 that would give me negative 5d plus negative 5n is equal to negative 60. This is by cancellation law, multiplication, and distributive law. Meaning I multiplied by negative 5 and I distributed to the d, to the n, and to the 12. Now, magical things are going to happen when I add them together. Uh, I'm going to add just these two equations. Here, I'll make it in red to make sure that everybody understands what I'm adding. I'm adding these two equations. This is an improved version of the previous one where we multiply by negative 5 so that these will line up. Negative 5 ends plus positive 5 ends, that's going to be 0 ends. That's what I want. I want to eliminate one of the variables. <clears throat> Alright, talk is cheap. Let's do it. So this will give me, I got 10 dimes, take away 5 dimes. That would give me 5 d's plus zero ends and that's equal to 35 add the two equations together that's what I did so 5d is equal to 35 there we just got rid of the zero stuff I could slap uh, one-fifth on both sides or divide both sides by five I get that that's equal to seven killing the coefficient for example would do it and now I've got it the number of dimes is seven you can almost just eyeball the rest of it because you've got 70 times that means you got 70 cents in dimes and you had a total 95 cents so you must have 
um, 25 cents in, in nickels so you must have five nickels but um, you don't have to think that hard let's do it the same way we've been doing all the other ones which is we bring down one of these equations any one of the original equations and we call it one of the given ones and on that one we substitute our new found value d was equal to 7 so therefore 7 plus n is equal to 12 that's the substitution step I could subtract 7 from both sides or add a negative 7 to both sides that would give me something like this cancellation law of addition would allow it and yippee there's our answer 7 dimes 5 nickels money in the bank literally alright <clears throat> that was fun so now we've got the funnest of the, all the fun things here we've been doing this step over and over over again and we've been adding the equations maybe it's time for the uh, nitty gritty here for the awesomeness of creative ideas and perfection in thinking to to make its way into our lecture here so for the love of perfection for the love of beauty of thinking you could pause pause this video here and try to prove the following if you start off with a is equal to b if that's given okay and if c is equal to b that's given why is it okay to add the two equations and come up with the uh, statement that a plus c is equal to b plus d somehow you have to, you have to use your three and a half pound brain and your creativity and your perfect thinking to fill in the gaps and go from here from those two things are given to this this is what we want so this is the start we start here we want to end here this is beautiful it's a white canvas where you get to pour all your creativity and perfect thinking alright I'm waiting for you guys to pause it hit pause try to do it yourself you're pausing it you're pausing it ain't nobody got time for that you should pause it and try it yourself all right, supposing you did that, you come back. Let's see one way to tackle this problem. So I could say this, uh, something like this. I have A plus B, A is equal to, whoa, 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 C is equal to D, that's given, right? Of course, I could add a B to both sides. I could add a B to this side, and I could add a B to that side. I could even do it with good handwriting is equal to B plus D so what I did here is on both sides I added a B to both sides that's that's called cancellation law of addition that's legal from this step to that step I added B to both sides it's not bad um, I could take the other one that was given that was this one over here that was A is equal to B that was given and on this one I could add a C to both sides I could add a C to that side and I could add a C to that side that would be justified by cancellation law of addition as well uh, it says you can add a C to both sides now watch what's happening here uh, the the B plus C is equal to B plus D right but the B plus C which is the same thing as that one is equal to this one so from there you go to there B plus D is equal to B plus C but B plus C is equal to A plus C therefore therefore uh, we can conclude that B plus D is equal to A plus C by transitivity property E P K Y boom money see why they pay me that's beautiful right transitivity property and a couple cancellation laws and this proves that you can always add the left sides and add the right sides and and now that those two sums will be equal so long as the first two were equal to begin with that proves it alright I think that's enough for one day we'll see us here next time enjoy yourselves peace